So we've heard a little bit about like ChatGPT solving physics problems, for example. I just want to show you what it actually looks like when you ask it to solve a problem set problem. Um, and so I literally uh, copied and pasted uh, the following problem uh, just from an 801 problem set at some point, straight out of the PDF. Um, and basically you paste it in like this and it just starts typing out its solution. Uh, what's interesting I found is that it's stochastic. If I open up a new prompt and ask it the same problem, which we can do in a moment, it may solve it differently the second time and it may or may not get the same answer. Um, and so, yeah, you sort of see what Emma was mentioning about when it has a long response to type out, it can be kind of annoying waiting on it, but uh, you could imagine for a student, this is still a lot quicker than what they could take on. Um, so it looks like it actually got the right answer to this problem this time. Uh, maybe I can find the original time I tried. Yeah, okay, so this is the same problem I asked GPT-4 a week ago, and it went through, uh, and what you'll see is that it got 14,700 newtons. The correct answer is like 73,000. Um, and so I went through its math and I found actually in one of the steps right here, uh, when it squared this, it dropped the over two in there. So what Jan was saying this morning about it being terrible at math, it does actually make simple arithmetic mistakes. Um, and so I pointed it out and it tells me, oh, you're absolutely correct, I apologize, and it corrected it, still off by a factor of 10. This time I decided, hmm, I'm not gonna tell it what the mistake was, I'm just gonna say, did you make a mistake here? And it was able to figure it out. Um, which is kind of fascinating because normally when we think of algorithms, we think of these like deterministic things. And um, to me, it was kind of interesting that I didn't even have to tell you what the mistake was and you were able to find it. Um, this is just to catalyze some discussion about the role it may play in the classroom because I imagine there will be students trying to use this to solve, for example, 801 problems and it does reasonably well. Um, Here's another sort of creative idea I had on potentially how instructors could use it. Um, let's ask it to generate an exam problem with solutions for a sort of mid-level quantum mechanics course on the subject of perturbation theory. Um, because I know generating material for courses can kind of be a hassle. Um, and I don't know what it's gonna do this time because every time it does something different, um, but you can see the rate at which it generated is quite quick, and uh, just glancing at it, this does indeed look like a perturbation theory problem um, that has three different parts, and it spits out the solution. Uh, of course, we would have to check the math on it to see if it actually did the right thing. But the point is, is even if it made a mistake somewhere, this can generate ideas. Um, it's not necessarily that you have to use it exactly what it spits out. It could just save you time by generating texts or ideas to go in a direction of writing problems. And just given its behavior, how random it seems to be, that could be a way of ensuring that you've always got kind of a novel problem there that there aren't solutions for somewhere on the internet. Um, so that's just one quick example. I know I'm already short on time here. So another example I wanted to show of a research application that I've actually found kind of fascinating is using it as sort of a referee for papers. So I'm actually just gonna pull up a LaTeX document here of a paper that I just had accepted, and I'm gonna copy and paste the abstract into ChatGPT. But before I submit it, I'm gonna ask it, can you find anything scientifically wrong in this? Um, Okay, so now it's summarizing. We gotta wait on it to go through. So by the way, also summarizing papers, if you just wanna feed it a paper and say give me 10 bullet points describing what's going on here, it's actually quite good. In this case, it gave me a summary that I think is longer than the abstract, but in the end it concludes does not appear to have scientific inaccuracies. Now let's paste in the same abstract, which is about two white dwarfs orbiting each other and their orbits decaying due to the emission of gravitational radiation. Um, but I'm gonna change something now. I'm gonna go up to the part where I talk about the 
uh, gravitational wave orbital in spiral. Uh, right after that, I'm gonna mention, we find that the two white dwarfs are expanding to a longer orbital period due to the emission of gravitational waves, um, which I think we all know that shouldn't happen normally because you're losing energy and angular momentum. And just say, submit the same thing and say, can you find something wrong? Oh, look, yep. There's an inconsistency, it picked up on exactly that sentence and explains to me why that contradicts established understanding of gravitational radiation. Um, this is pretty impressive. This is the reason I wanted to hold this meeting. Um, even though we heard some sort of critiques of the limitations of these models this morning, when I saw that it could do this this quickly, I realized there's enormous potential to save us time here. Um, and it isn't just for research and teaching. If you need to make a website giving a description of what the MIT physics department is, you can just ask it. And I'll conclude with that. Let's just say, uh, could you give an overview of different areas of research that happened in MIT physics for a website? Yeah, of course, it's always happy to. Um, so yeah, now it's gonna give a bunch of bullet points. Um, Sure, some of these are gonna be superficial and not have the kind of details that we would fill in, but if you just need a starting point of some text that then you take and fill in the details, this is a huge time saver. Um, and I don't wanna to cut too much from the discussion session. I really just wanted to show everyone this thing in action. It's also amazing at coding. Um, I'll give an example of a quick coding task I used it to. Emma gave a complicated one earlier. Uh, a coding task I had the other day for a proposal was just for a given chirp mass, which is kind of a reduced mass in general relativity, I wanted a plot of mass one versus mass two for a given chirp mass. So let's ask it, could you write a Python script to plot mass one versus mass two for a given chirp mass? It's not a lot of context to give it, but I'm just gonna let it go and see what it does. And it already knows that chirp mass is something from astrophysics and it shows me right there what it thinks it is, it's correct. Um, and now it's gonna make a function that basically interpolates and does the plotting. Um, this actually worked. Uh, I just pasted it into Python. The, what it did this time is actually different from the previous time. Um, but yeah, the point is, is that something, yeah, I could have done it. It would have taken me like two to three minutes. It did it in five seconds. So I have to spend less time doing things like that now. And that's sort of, I think, the transformational thing of it really kind of changes our day-to-day -day lives and research potentially if we know how to use it correctly. Um, okay, so I would say let's uh, transition to the discussion session now. Um, and I'll leave this up if we decide we wanna ask ChatGPT something. Uh, we can. Okay, thank you. I uh, could you use the mic so that uh, Zoom can hear. And yeah, if the speakers could come down, that would be great. Uh, this is why we've got the chair set up here. It's just a quick question about the last thing. Um, what happens if you? put that abstract with the wrong information, with the wrong line at it, and you don't ask it to find anything wrong. Will it try you to make just it consistent? The you kind of need to give just, it a prompt. Well, just ask it to summarize the information or do what you ask it first. Yes, I bet it will just it summarize. Without giving it that is wrong. Um, we can try that. Uh, so what I will do is take this exact prompt, uh, and then just say, could you summarize this? But yeah, I'm willing to bet it's not gonna go look for an inaccuracy. So yeah, this is one of the issues, right? It's not an instructor, a teacher that goes, wait a minute, you have to ask it the right question, right? 
Um, the other tricky thing I found is if it gets something right and you tell it you did something wrong, it's of course like, oh, I'm so sorry, I will find the mistake, and then it will actually give you the wrong answer the second time because you told it to. Um, so that's also something to be wary of with it that I found. But yeah, it just spit out a summary. It didn't say anything was inaccurate. Yeah. Oh, did it? Oh, I didn't see that. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay, it's exceeding my expectations already. Um, yeah, it's powerful. Um, so one of my thoughts is that before I submit a paper to a journal, I'm just gonna feed the entire paper through it. And even if it's not right about everything it calls out, it may catch something that I phrased in a way that could be easily misunderstood by a graduate student or something. Oh, could you use the mic? Yeah. If you, if you do very careful prompt engineering, so instead of just giving the summary and asking, like some text and asking to summarize, if you ask it, okay, now you are a, like you are a senior astrophysics professor at MIT and this is the data and do something. But then if you add extra lines, like go through this text carefully, you know, like uh, if you add such extra lines, uh, it's called prompt engineering, then you would see far better results. And then if you, so those kind of things actually improve the search results of ChatGPT a lot. And that itself is like a new field of research, like how, how to write the right prompt so that it can improve itself. Yeah, I just learned about this a few days ago. Apparently there's a new career line called prompt engineer, which is more or less just learning how to use this tool very effectively. 